All right. Welcome, everybody. We are live here with the CEO and founder of Crowd Machine, Craig Sproul. Craig, thank you very much for joining us. Thanks, Jeff, for having me. Great to be here. Right on. Why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, what inspired you to create the vision of Crowd Machine and what problems you were looking to solve through the creation of it? No, that's a long story. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'll keep it brief. Uh, so I started out life as a software engineer, like many of us do, um, writing code um, for very solving very difficult problems uh, and was sort of uh, in the right place at the right time and started a systems integration company um, that I grew over a period of time. So for that process, I learned a lot about building application solutions for customers and enterprise, um, mostly enterprise. And uh, the really the vision for what Crowd Machine is today came from all, the, all of those different experiences, the, the trials and uh, issues that you run into when you're typically building apps. Um, and I've always felt that there's just been an easier way to do it. Um, and uh, so started working on this technology um, and really looking to democratize the concept of programming across a broader audience. Um, and at the same time, given the nature of the way that our technology works, we can devolve current centralized infrastructure. Um, so for any of you who haven't taken a look, check out the white paper. Um, it'll explain how we can actually utilize mobile phones and other types of devices like IoT devices, practice processes on a, on a global computer um, and run apps that are typically way too big to fit on. So um, it's an interesting read, check it out. And uh, if you've got any questions, let me know. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Yeah. And so the Telegram group is a great place for people to go to check that out as well. And that's linked through the webpage. But uh, you touched on a little bit there that there are different sections, I guess you could say, to Crowd Machine. You know, you have the Crowd App Studio, the Crowd Share, and the Crowd Computer. And there's these are three very distinct features of Crowd Machine. And I was just, uh, if we could break them down one by one, just so yep. for full understanding, um, if we could start with the Crowd App Studio, exactly what is that and uh, what innovation is it bringing into the blockchain space right now? Well, the uh, innovation is pretty straightforward, um, although a very complex problem to solve, and, and that is we truly have removed the need uh, to be a software developer to write very complex apps. Uh, we have some very, very sophisticated applications in large customers today. Um, so customers you may have heard of are GE and Aon Hewitt and Anthem Healthcare and um, PricewaterhouseCoopers. They're using the tech. The innovation behind it is simply, um, albeit, you know, again, not trivial, we have removed the need to write code to build very sophisticated apps. So what that does is it introduces a whole new demographic of people into um, the blockchain sector uh, and building decentralized applications. I think it's an important distinction to understand that we're not a blockchain. We're not trying to be a blockchain at this point in time. Um, we're blockchain agnostic, so you can consume whatever blockchain structure you want to consume underneath the, the, uh, the app studio. But that's the app studio. It's basically a, a visualized representation of creating uh, applications. And again, very sophisticated ones, if that's what you want to do, um, that, that enables people who aren't programmers to get involved. Um, the second piece of the technology. Yeah. yeah. yeah if, if you're, are we going to move on or continue talking about the crowd app studio? No, I was going to move into CrowdShare. So have you got a question on Crowd App Studio? For sure, yeah. I'd love to expand on Crowd App Studio just a little bit more because um, you were saying that uh, this is being used by a list of Fortune 500 companies. And so unlike many different ICOs or projects, this is something that currently has a working product then. Yeah, uh, very much so. So we just haven't released it to the public previously simply because we've been focused on making sure that the product was robust. Mm -hmm. uh, and we've done that working with a number of Fortune 500 companies, as I mentioned, and they're using it for all sorts of things. Um, you know, there are IoT systems running on the product today, um, working with, uh, for example, um, uh, surgical robotics type uh, appliances or applications. Um, we've got uh, case management systems out there. We've got field service systems, um, sales rep management systems, all sorts of things that customers have built. Massive banking system running on the tech today that three banks are actually using. Um, and uh, it's, it's sort of not, it's not verticalized into one industry, it's a very horizontal product, which means that people can use it to build anything as they would you know, normal development. 
the, the big issue or the big change here is that, again, you don't need to be a developer, but more importantly, and why we're being embraced with Fortune 500s is that um, because we've removed the concept of writing code, the product is actually very, very fast to build applications. And we've got that on the, on the low side, it's about 10 times faster. And on the high side, we've seen examples where customers are delivering stuff about 45 times faster to market. Um, so they're all over it. Um, of course, yeah, because the speed also equates to a massive and drastic savings in uh, working capital as well. That's right. And uh, reduction of risk. The big uh, thing right now that we see isn't so much the price. People aren't saying, hey, look, you know, let's try and negotiate price. What they're really focused on is, you know, will this product allow me to serve my customers' needs faster? Mm -hmm. And that's the driving force that we, in, we see in the market. Um, and I've quoted this stat quite a bit. If you look at Gartner statistics or any of those sorts of guys, um, any of the analysts, even in the IoT, uh, IoT sector alone, they're saying that there'll be, you know, 50 odd, uh, I don't know, 50 odd billion devices in the field uh, by 2025, requiring 25 to 30 million new applications to support them. And the current model, as uh, we uh, function today, writing code in the traditional sense, um, just isn't going to scale to meet those demands. Um, so we are just one of the companies that are sort of first to the core with the product that will allow the industry to meet those uh, app demands going forward. Yeah, yeah, I think you nailed it. You know, with uh, the advancement and proliferation of blockchain technology, uh, there is really becoming a bottleneck in developers able to fill the needs of customers, consumers, and new creative ideas and innovation. And so, this is what Crowd Machine is. What I'm hearing is doing is allowing for that innovation to come from more so laymen. Correct? Yeah, that's right. So we're taking the coding piece out of it. Um, we're working on removing the, the need to actually understand how to write solidity and, uh, and all the other different types of um, mm -hmm. uh, code plays around various blockchains. We're automating all of that function in addition to all of the typical app stuff that you do. You know, blockchain is, is a utility. It serves a purpose, functions as a ledger. Um, but when you're writing apps, as everybody knows, typically there's a lot more involved than that. You have different Various applications require workflow or various forms of authentication, integration into all sorts of different uh, databases and systems that exist in the world. Um, there's just a litany of things that an app uh, has to do and blockchain typically is one part of that now. Well, not typically, it's becoming one part of that. Mm -hmm. So the product we've uh, got in market today or the Crowd App Studio is a technology that allows you to build any type of application and you can leverage blockchain where you need to. Um, so that's what it's really all about. But it, again, um, the important point you raised is that, hey, look, you could pick it up and, and start using it to build apps. And we see that a lot. For um, sure, yeah. Because for someone like myself to start using Solidity, you know, that's, that is a massive learning curve. How would you compare the learning curve to, say, learning something like Solidity or even simpler like JavaScript or C++ uh, in comparison to building an app on Crowd Machine? Uh, it's much easier to get started on Crowd Machine. Um, you know, you don't need to understand syntax. Uh, you don't need to understand how to run compilers or debuggers or any of that sort of stuff. Uh, the learning curve is significantly reduced. Uh, there's some terminology to learn. Uh, once you've got your head around the terminology and how the, the pieces fit together, really it's uh, anybody that can, can mind map. So if you can get in front of a whiteboard and mind map out a problem, um, then, hey, you can get into Crowd Machine and, and build an app. Uh, so really the only prerequisite is that you have the ability to be able to solve a problem, uh, which you have coding anyway, right? Mm -hmm. okay, so, um, so, yeah, that's really the only prerequisite. And, you know, it, it's, I see different people pick it up at, at different speeds. Um, the fastest I've seen anybody sort of pick it up is a week um, and it'll range from anything from a week to three or four weeks for most people to get very mm -hmm. fluent in the product. Yeah. yeah, that's not a bad learning, a learning curve, uh, you know, three weeks to be able to build your own app. That's, that's quite nice. <laughs> it's a lot easier than trying to learn solidity. That's right. And so a point that you raised again that I just want to reiterate in case anybody missed that is uh, this is blockchain agnostic. So mm -hmm. a lot of people who are building applications on, say, Ethereum or Neo, it would be exclusive to that blockchain. Whereas with Crowd Machine, uh, an application built on the Crowd App Studio can run on Ethereum, Neo, Quantum, Stratus, any of those that's interchangeably right. as well. Yeah, so we're, we're about to release that capability. Um, it's, it's being built right now. Um, 
And the other thing that we're doing is ultimately um, allowing, so in our environment, you'll design a smart contract, for example, as one part of an application. Um, and it will generate the, the code specific to the various blockchains that might be out there. So it'll generate the solidity code, for example, for Ethereum. Um, uh, and ultimately what we're going to allow you to do is say, hey, look, I just want to, I want to run against the best price on whatever blockchain. So it'll, it'll basically uh, disintermediate the blockchains and you'll nominate whether you want speed, whether you want price, whether you want a combination of the both, and it'll look at the market um, against each of those blockchains and then choose the blockchain at that point in time that's offering the best uh, price performance ratio that you're looking for. Uh, and manage the transactions across the chains on your behalf. Um, so ultimately, we become a, a little bit of a market maker in some respects um, because we have the ability to get apps to market so much faster than anybody else right now. We're actually seeing quite an influx into the product. Like We, we kicked off the, uh, the first beta round, public beta, and the thing filled out in seconds um, and, uh, well, pretty quickly. And... Um, those individuals will sort of um, get to experience the product. And uh, ultimately what will happen is that um, applications will proliferate on the, on the crowd computer and using the crowd app studio simply because it's so much faster. So mm -hmm. what we expect to see is just a, a large number of applications created on the technology um, and utilizing whatever blockchain needs to utilize underneath the covers. Uh, we also believe that blockchains will ultimately verticalize in some way. Um, for example, you can see Ripple verticalized, has verticalized or was verticalized into, into the banking sector. They're doing phenomenally well. Um, there is a lot of money in the valley here in Silicon Valley being pumped into blockchains. Not all of them can survive as sort of generic platforms. They have to verticalize um, to, to uh, you know, own market share. So, we see blockchains uh, verticalizing into auth or verticalizing into title management, all sorts of different things. So you'll end up in your app, you might be using two or three different blockchains at any one point in time to perform a task that you're, you're trying to perform. So being blockchain agnostic is what we do. Um, people ask us all the time, are you gonna build your own blockchain? And we're like, no, no I don't really want to. Uh, prefer to uh, you know remain um, sort of agnostic at this point. Yeah. And, you know, just as a side note, I think this is something that really excites me is it's going to really push innovation in these uh, smart contract platform decentralized application providers, because, you know, say if Ethereum isn't scaling fast enough, then say someone would opt to use crowd machine application on NEO. Mm -hmm. And so this is going to really start to level the playing field between these smart contract providers. That's right, because you can swap from blockchain to blockchain so quickly, um, it will put pressure on the blockchain providers to, to lift their game. Um, you know, I don't, uh, we all understand the scalability issues facing many of the blockchains today. And, and I'd suggest that, you know, given my background, having spent so much time in enterprise and seeing the enterprise uh, requirements. In fact, I was writing a paper a couple of days ago and, and I was thinking about one of our contractual client uh, commitments or, or requirements with one of our customers, whereby they, we incur contractual pen penalties if, in fact, the system isn't responsive within three seconds. Right. Mm -hmm. So that really limits what blockchain you can actually go and use today. Right? Um, so blockchains, uh, the blockchain vendors need to get their act together if they seriously think that um, enterprise is going to pick it up in a big way. Um, and it'll happen. You know, I, I, I reflect on back in the, the database days when everybody started building database engines and they were slow and, and the rest of it. And the investment just took a period of time to come together and the technology took a period of time to come together. And, and, you know, relational databases today are pretty quick. Same thing that happened with blockchain. They just need to change the way they're doing it. Yeah, for sure. So uh, myself as, let's say, a consumer or a user of blockchain, I build an app on the Crowd App Studio. You know, the learning curve takes a week to four weeks. And now uh, it brings us to the second part of Crowd Machine, which is the Crowd Share, uh, mm -hmm. where essentially those the apps or functions that I build can be monetized. Are you able to expand on that a little bit? Sure. Um, so there's two things about um, the crowd share, and the easiest way for your users to think about crowd share is to consider GitHub. Um, it's similar to GitHub with a difference in that it monetizes whatever you put in it. So it's like a marketplace where you can create an application behavior 
and put that behavior into CrowdShare. And then when anybody on the network actually uses that behavior that you've created in their own app, every single time it's run, you as the creator of that content gets rewarded through tokens, right? Um, and, uh, you know, it's important to understand that our applications exist as these behaviors that you construct. So uh, an example would be, hey, I'm creating a medical record system um, and I want to admit a patient to hospital as a function of that system. That's a behavior that that system exhibits. Um, ordering blood gas analysis or um, some sort of lab uh, is a behavior that that app exhibits. Discharging a patient from hospital is a behavior that that app exhibits. So in our world, we allow you to model these behaviors and, and there's just a massive growing library of behaviors um, that you can go and pick and choose from, right? You can build your own from the ground up or you can say, you know what, there's one there that already exists. I don't have to pay for it. I'm just going to consume it out of CrowdShare, put it into my application. I can modify it to suit myself. Um, and in fact, it supports derivative works as well. So if I was to take something, modify it, put it back into CrowdShare and then you were to use it, um, the, the uh, technology keeps track of the modifications that I've made to your uh, initial uh, work and it pays proportionally um, across both uh, contributors in that case. Um, so we've got very much a framework to promote um, the community. And uh, one of the key things here is distributing the wealth of technology around the world. I just got back from Mauritius where small community, you know, 1.2 million people in Mauritius, lots of educational programs going on that the government are promoting. They're remote from the market, so they're disadvantaged from being able to participate in, in these markets um, using the, the crowd machine technology and crowd share and crowd app studio um, will allow those types of regions to become uh, uh, participants in the decentralized um, technology market as it evolves. Um, so yeah, the, the crowd share facilitates that and really it's a way for people to monetize their intellectual capital and, and uh, generate additional income. Mm -hmm. And so monetization. Yeah, Sorry. go for it, Greg, my mistake. Uh, you can put entire apps in there as well. So if, if a developer wants to build or, or I use the word developer loosely, if you want to put an entire app in there, you want to build something, then you can put it in there and monetize it across the network as well. Mm -hmm. So essentially it'd be like pay to play when somebody uses your app or function, you get paid and that would be in the form of crowd machine tokens. That's right. Yeah. 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 So that's, that's how the model works. Yeah. Perfect. So now you have, you've built your app, uh, you've essentially monetized it through the uh, pseudo GitHub. And now to run the application, the third portion of crowd machine is the crowd computer. Yeah. Okay. So Crowd Computer is a work in progress. Um, it will be released this year uh, in beta format anyway. Um, and it is uh, a very interesting technology. Uh, it leverages the way that um, the Crowd App Studio allows you to create applications. So I mentioned patterns of behavior and I used an example of admitting a patient to hospital as a behavior. Well, think about mind mapping that behavior out. So again, if you're in front of a whiteboard and you said, okay, well, what does that mean? Um, first of all, I might need a screen to capture some patient information. The second thing might be some sort of um, integration into a system to check to see whether that patient has previous medical records with the hospital or, or the clinic. The third step of that may be um, another screen that pops up for the user to uh, maybe add some additional information. So each of those steps in that behaviour we refer to as activities. And what the crowd computer allows uh, an application to do is exist as pieces across the network. So like a jigsaw has multiple pieces, imagine that and if the jigsaw were the application, imagine that, that jigsaw being broken into its parts and each of those little parts being distributed across billions of devices. All right, so that's fundamentally how applications exist in our network. And then there's a whole bunch of intelligent routing that goes on and, and what we call um, uh, gen or blueprint generations that determine the, the uh, best path of execution for that application for you. So the platform or the technology looks at synchronous versus asynchronous tasks. It'll make a determination as to whether a task can needs to be run in real, like right now as a synchronous task or whether it can be background tasking. Um, so if it knows that a task needs to be executed right now on your behalf, it will find the closest node to you to execute that. And that could well be 
on someone else's cell phone sitting at the desk beside you in your office, or it could be on your own cell phone, for example. Um, and for asynchronous tasks, it, tasks, it distributes them farther afield across the network so that we get balance across the, the, uh, the global network. So the crowd computer is a decentralized peer-to-peer -peer network. Um, it takes the crowd virtual machine, um, which is a lightweight VM, uh, puts it on devices, or you can download the virtual machine onto your device, participate on the network. It uses proof of trust and proof of worth to uh, ensure security and integrity of the device. Proof of worth is a, is a function of um, when you install the virtual machine on your device, it runs a set of algorithms to work out what it is actually capable of. Say, for example, a, a, um, a 32 core processor in a data center is obviously more powerful than the cell phone sitting on your desk. Um, so it works out, okay, these are the types of tasks that I can run on this person's device versus this person's device. So it works all of that stuff out and then it undertakes uh, or it constructs payment channels for execution. So every time that jigsaw piece puzzle runs on your phone, you are going to be rewarded in tokens um, and, it, and it rewards the payment channel. So if it's had to step through, say, uh, two points to get to you, then each of those points that it steps through are rewarded as well as you for executing that behavior. Um, and what we're finding uh, initially is that performance is very, very good. Um, you know, that was one of my concerns in putting this together. Um, but if you think about it in terms of, or in comparison to centralized infrastructure, uh, you might be remote from say an Amazon uh, data center and you might have many hops from where you are to a data center to, to run your app. Um, in our world, those hops may be very much reduced to get to the, the content that you need to run right now in your app. Um, and if you think about what's going on, typically applications are loaded holistically into memory um, as large binaries or some form of application. Um, but you rarely are using an entire application scope at any one point in time. So applications sit in memory consuming resources without actually uh, utilizing all of the resource itself um, or running all of the app itself. So what this thing does is it actually runs pieces of apps as it needs to run them, which means you can have very uh, small footprints of processor and memory to execute an app holistically across the network. So it's a, it's a long answer to a simple question. What is the cloud computer? Uh, it's a very complex beast, but uh, it's certainly going to change the marketplace around centralized infrastructure because it's faster and it's cheaper. Uh, this thing is going to change the game. And, you know, holistically, if you, if you think about what we're doing, um, we're decentralizing centralized infrastructure and we remove the need to be a programmer to create sophisticated applications. This thing is a real deal. Mm -hmm. You can expect to see this thing have a significant impact on the market over the next couple of years. Definitely, because with the crowd computer, it's, it seems as it's very beneficial for someone who's using the application as their processing power is dramatically increased as well as for anyone who has, you know, spare processing power laying around, whether that's uh, miners that they're currently using on Ethereum. Uh, mm -hmm. Once it moves over to proof of stake, they can use that with Crowd Machine mm -hmm. or, you know, your old iPhone 4 that you don't use anymore. You can just turn that thing on, plug it into an outlet and essentially be, for lack of a better term, mining Crowd Machine tokens. Yep, that's exactly right. It's a, it's a um, good explanation of how it works. Um, and so, yeah, we expect to see significant uptick with the crowd computer as well, because look, even internally, um, I looked at a bunch of stats when I was calculating price for, and the number of tokens that we need to run this. And there's been questions around, you know, why you have so many actual tokens. And the, the reason for that is that you've got to have ample supply to be able to run the network, right? But um, when I was calculating all of this out, I modeled our own infrastructure, which is currently hosted on this um, and we write a fairly significant check to Amazon every month for running our infrastructure. And on average, we use 2.7% of its capacity. Mm -hmm. There are peak times, granted, um, but on average, we use 2.7% of what we pay for. Um, and uh, so if you only end up paying for what you're consuming versus paying, you know, it's sort of a flat rate for infrastructure, there's a big difference. Um, and uh, I know that... Uh, Amazon, for example, AWS are changing their pricing models and others will as well. Um, but the other thing that 
decentralization addresses, as everybody knows, is that there's massive redundancy and scalability in decentralized uh, decentralization of technology. Um, and they're key, really key issues. We had a customer where um, S3 went out on Amazon and they were down. Right? Uh, and uh, that was in a, in a very significant call center and you just can't be down uh, in this space. So decentralization addresses that issue as well, which is a good thing. Fantastic. And so Crowd Machine uh, is revolutionary on really more than just one aspect because, you know, there isn't really something that's doing what the crowd computer is doing. There's also nothing else that's doing what the Crowd App Studio is doing either. Yeah, there's, you know, not in the same sort of context. There's nobody in the in the blockchain space today like we are um, from the Crowd App Studio perspective. The Golem project uh, is trying to build like a, a crowd-based computer, but it's very different. We're actually focused on running real-time applications. Um, uh, those guys are focused on doing digital rendering and, and those sorts of things. Um, mm -hmm. So really two different types of applications, but yeah, certainly there's nobody like us in the market today. And again, the good thing about us is we're real, right? We have customers, we're generating revenue um, and uh, have, have really kicked the tires hard on this thing uh, and make sure that when people get their hands on it, it, it is actually going to do what we, we say it's going to do. Um, and that was pretty important to us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is, that is a massive difference between uh, crowd machine and uh, essentially the plethora amount of the other ICOs out there. And, and crowd machine is having an ICO coming up relatively soon. Uh, do you want to talk about that? What the, uh, the token target is and just the overall structure and vision? Sure. So um, we have been looking at an ICO. In fact, we've got a whitelist open on the website today that people are, can, are welcome to go and participate in. But, um, you know, the other thing, the, the first thing I'll say is that the ICO market is changing. Where it was three or four months ago uh, is different to where it is now. Uh, and I think that there's going to be, and I use the term blood on the streets with respect to a lot of ICOs, Mm -hmm. um, there have been a lot of people that have made a hell of a lot of promises on the back of a white paper. And I can tell you from many years of experience of building software that it's never as easy as it seems. Um, so making commitments on timeframes, you really need to know what you're talking about. Um, so I suspect that there's going to be a bit of pain felt uh, in the ICO market. But what I'm seeing, and actually I got off a call this morning um, with uh, some investors and they're serious, serious investors, right? Um, they are seeing it as well. The market's gone full circle whereby um, people are going back to serious due diligence on the investment front. So does this, car, does this company have a team that has experience? Does this company have a product that is, you know, at least minimum buyer, minimal viable product today? Um, as an advantage, do they have customers? Do they have revenue? So you're actually seeing uh, a transition back to uh, real sort of, formal due diligence in the ICO sector from the institutional investors today. Um, so the, the days of, of raising money on the back of a white paper are dissipating. Um, so the, the advantage with us and why we're getting so much attention right now is, as we said, we're the real deal. Um, we have customers, we have revenue, we have an experienced management team, we know what we're talking about. Um, the ICO pricing, um, people have been asking about, you know, why, why are you raising so much? Well, the, the simple answer to that is because taking a product of this magnitude, which is fundamentally changing the, the nature of two, two different axes in the technology industry, one from the developer landscape and two from the infrastructure landscape, taking something of that magnitude to market costs a lot of money. You know, and, I, and I recently asked the question, if this was Salesforce or Google or someone of that nature, which was doing what we are doing in a big way, now, what would you expect that they would spend on something like this? Um, and the vast majority of our money, um, and we're going to, uh, vast majority of proceeds we're raising, um, what we're going to do is uh, publish a document here shortly that outlines what the spend is on, and a vast chunk of it um, is in community development. Our belief is that our success is predicated upon community, um, so we have already begun working with uh, educational institutions, universities, and different um, teaching facilities around the globe to um, take our training materials. Uh, we're giving, and it's, it's free for developers to start using this technology, right? You don't actually pay for this thing until you deploy it into the production network. 
Um, so they'll get the teaching materials for free. They get access to the technology for free. Um, and we will work with them to promote um, educational services in those areas to um, literally have millions of people around the world using the technology. Um, and uh, that assists both those individuals who are using the tech. Um, it assists, it, it assists, assists us in developing the community and the crowd share um, piece of the market. Um, and that in turn assists our customers by enabling them to get applications to market that much faster again. Um, so it's a win-win across the board for everybody involved. And most of the spend is being, is being directed towards sales and marketing activities around um, making sure that the technology is understood uh, around the globe. Mm -hmm. And something that I really appreciated with the structuring of your ICO is because you are raising such a, a apparently or comparably significant amount of money, it's being divided up into sections so that people don't have their funds locked away. You know, a lot of people right now are saying, well, I want to just keep my money invested in say Ethereum because of the state of the market. So uh, if you want to just talk a little bit about the, the structuring of the ICO and how that will work for people on, let's say just more of a financial incentive. Uh, yeah, sure. So, so there are, um, and this is a long winded story, <laughs> but um, to, to break it down, it's it's broken into sections over a long period of time. We were originally going to run with an ICO, which was a short period, but the market has shifted. Uh, and so what we're doing is allowing uh, people to come in over an extended period of time. It's I think it's about 11 months in total um, that the ICO will run for. There's obviously a pre-sales component that's, that's in play right now. I mentioned to, speaking with investors this morning, but they're your institutionals for the most part. Um, but the public auction... Uh, will kick off in the March timeframe. Um, we were targeting end of February, but it's going to be sort of early March, I think. Uh, and what you'll be able to do is basically get in in sort of 24-hour um, periods. Um, and, uh, and then if you choose to exit, you can exit. You're not locked in in any way. Um, but there'll be sort of 24-hour periods over a series of 11 months in which you can actually participate in the, in the ICO. Um, and there's obviously um, incentives to get in earlier than later as the as the uh, the auction occurs. Um, the important thing about that isn't just the, the you know, raising of the funds; it's also the distribution of the tokens to the network in a in a timely manner that allows, as these apps proliferate, people are going to require tokens to run those apps or consume those apps on the network. Um, it allows those, those tokens to be dispersed as they're going to be consumed by the network executing the application. So um, this is actually a utility token. Uh, it's important that people understand that. It is a true utility. You've heard me speak about rewarding people for using their devices on the network. You've heard me speak about rewarding um, developers for participating and creating content for CrowdShare. Um, so it is a utility token that's being applied uh, to the market. And the ICO is structured to, as I mentioned, roll those tokens out in a, uh, can, in a thoughtful manner for consumption. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it's not our responsibility to take those to secondary exchanges. Secondary exchanges typically pick those things up. Um, uh, so we expect that that will happen with these as well. Right? So does that, sure. that answer your question? Definitely does. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, and so then outside of the ICO, what is the short term, say one to two year roadmap for crowd machine and certain milestones that you're looking to achieve? Okay. So um, crowd machine is a big piece of technology. Uh, there are with many parts, as you've just heard. Um, we truly uh, are on a mission to ultimately out, sorry, open source all the tech, the entire tech stack will be open source. We haven't open sourced it yet, but we're about to begin open sourcing pieces of it. And there's stuff that I haven't discussed that is part of this uh, product. Uh, we have a, a product that is part of the bigger suite of uh, products called Reach, which allows integration behind firewall integration from a decentralized cloud. Um, so the Reach source code will be released here shortly. And that's um, a tech that allows integration into all the uh, typical uh, database engines that exist inside organizations. Um, it allows integration into Active Directory and LDAP compliant directories, uh, any data type interfaces. So we're going to open source that out, out uh, to the market here very shortly. 
Um, and then there will be a progressive release of the technology to open source over a period of time. So that's the open source play. Um, the crowd computer you've uh, heard us speak about, that will be uh, released to beta um, this year, um, probably towards uh, the third quarter of the year, I'd say that the crowd computer will go out. The Crowd App Studio and CrowdShare are going to beta in January. Um, and as I said, we opened up the doors to a, uh, a, a, a number of participants and that thing filled up pretty quick. So what we're going to do is start opening up uh, access to the beta every month for um, Crowd App Studio and CrowdShare for the foreseeable future, you know, probably three or four months um, as we finalise things and then we'll just open it up completely. Um, but people will have access to it and if people are desperate to get their hands on it, they can always contact us and we can um, add them to the list. Um, we're also behind the scenes and I've been working on this with the team for quite some time. Uh, and we started it probably about a year ago. Uh, the platform itself actually, or the technology itself has machine learning inherent in its, in its core. Um, and we are working on an AI side to software uh, engineering. Um, whereby um, we have software which self-evolves. Um, so the machine learning is used to not only look at the data that an app, particular application may be acquiring as a function of what it does, um, but also how it's used, when it's used, who used it, um, the pathway through the application that users are using to actually uh, perform their various tasks. Uh, and we have algorithms now that allow the dynamic reformation of an application based upon learning. Um, so it's like we're trying to get to this point of self-evolving software. Um, that's probably 18 months away, um, but that's sort of our, that's our, one of our big goals here um, is to get the AI piece into software itself so that software learns and changes itself to better suit its requirement as it, as it learns. Um, I don't typically speak about that, but uh, that's certainly um, a, you know, that's been a vision of, that's come from me for quite some time. Um, and uh, we've been sort of actively not, you know, we're not, it's not our sole focus, obviously, but we've been actively working on that for quite a period of time, sort of experimenting with what that looks like. So that's probably the, that's probably the big game in town ultimately, right? For sure. Yeah. Well, thank you for that golden nugget. Cause I certainly didn't find that on the webpage anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> not on the webpage anyway. Yeah. So if uh, people do want to become a little bit more informed about crowd machine and where can they visit? They can go to our uh, telegram page, go and join uh, the crowd machine telegram. They can join Facebook. They can join Twitter, um, visit the website. All of the links for all these different social media forums are available at the top of the website. Join up, ask questions. Um, we're happy to answer them. We're pretty busy, uh, so sometimes it takes us a little bit of time to get back to you. But um, you know, that's just the uh, the process we're in right now, getting this ICO rolled out. Um, but certainly, we're open to questions. We're open to learning. Uh, we want this to be the best tech there is, uh, and so uh, we don't believe for a moment that we have all the answers. Um, uh, and we do listen. So if you've got uh, thoughts or comments that you want to throw at us, then hey. Ron Madison, uh, we'll have a conversation. But yeah, go to the social media forums, check us out and go to the website. Perfectly. And so the website where everyone can find the links to the social media forums, just for everybody listening, is crowdmachine.com. C-R-O-W-D-M-A-C-H-I-N-E.com. So thank you very much for uh, coming on, Craig. It's been fantastic talking with you and uh, I'm very excited about this project. Thank you very much. And thank you to uh, all the viewers for taking the time. Much appreciated. Okay. See you, okay. Greg. Thanks. Bye. Bye.